welcome once again to Learning Literature with Sir Joe. I am happy to come your way with another lesson. And today we are looking at the topic archetype. But before we start today's lesson, previous lesson talked about the story structure theory which was developed by Christopher Booker. And this theory gives us the seven different types of plots which are the quest, overcoming the monster, rags to riches, voyage and return, tragedy, comedy, and rebirth. We looked at these in detail in our previous lesson. So if you miss this lesson, please, you can check the videos, uploads, and watch the lesson on the types of plot. As I said, our topic for today is archetype. An archetype basically is an idea, a symbol, pattern, or character type in a story. An archetype is a symbol, an idea, a pattern, character in a story. It is any story element that appears again and again in stories from cultures around the world and symbolizes something universal in the human experience. So when we talk about archetype, it is the reoccurrence of these ideas, these symbols, these patterns, or character types that we meet in different stories of different cultures around the world. And these symbolize something that is universal in human experience. We have three types of archetypes, which are the character archetype, situational archetype, and symbolic archetype. Our concentration will basically be on the character archetypes. The most common and important kind of archetype is the character archetype. And this is basically talking about the popular characters that universally appear in different um, stories of different cultures. And these popular characters that we mostly find in different stories of different cultures are the hero, the villain, or the anti-hero, or the trister. So that is basically what we term as the character archetype. We have three different groups of the character archetype, which was developed by the new Jungian um, concept. And these three different groups, which we looked at in a lesson on character, are the soul type. Then we have the ego type. And lastly, the self type. Under these three main categorization, we have four different types, and that is what we are going to look at in detail. Under the soul type, we have the explorer, the rebel, the lover, and the creator. Under the ego type, we have the innocent or the child, we have the orphan, we have the hero and the caregiver. And under the self type of archetype, we have the fool or the jester, we have the sage or mentor, and we have the magician and the ruler. We will take them one after the other. We will begin with the type of character called the innocent or the child. The innocent or child kind of 
archetype character or character archetype falls under the main group ego and this type of character or archetype usually follows a young or naive character a young or naive character that is a child who sees the world through rose tinted glasses so he he this type of character thinks that the world is rosy everything is easy to find until reality comes knocking so reality dawns on this character even as he goes through the life that he lives in the story with a rose tinted glasses so that is not to say that they end the story as jaded hearts of their former selves but they rather will learn a lesson or two about the world around them so in as much as he was seeing the world as an easy world or an easy one and living innocently the reality dawns on this character for him to learn certain kinds of lessons out of these things that he goes through in the story the strength of this type of character that is the innocent or the child type of character is optimism enthusiasm and imagination so any time we meet the innocent or child type of archetype in our stories the strength of this character is optimism because they live with innocence they are always optimistic about the events that are supposed or the events that will unfold in their lives they are enthusiastic and imaginative their weaknesses basically is their naivety and physical powerlessness so because of their innocence or naivety they might fall victims of other people that are wiser or much experienced than them and these characters also have desires and their desire is to always be a happy character and as we all know children will wish to be happy at any point in time in their lives and examples of such characters or archetypes are what we find in to kill a mocking bear that is scout and dorothy in the wizard of the ox so this is what we term the innocent and child archetype the next type of archetype that we will look at is what we call the orphan orphan is basically about characters that dream of being plucked from obscurity to prominence so they dream of being moved from the stage or the period of obscurity to a level of prominence and this we all have ever experienced such in our lives before we have ever fantasized about moving from obscurity to prominence and this is why orphans are of high demand as protagonists in, in stories because they have got the most to gain from good fortune so it's the orphan characters or the archetypes they, they don't need to be literally orphans that is in in reality or in its surface they are not supposed to be literally orphans but in most cases they are the type of archetype that would look for or they are in search of a new family so the orphan archetype is one that will not be literally an orphan in the test 
that's one that mostly will be looking out for a new family to associate with. They have some kind of strengths, desires, weaknesses. And their strength is that they have survival instinct. They are empathic and perseverance is part of their strength. So the orphan character, because of whatever he goes through, because of his desire to move from obscurity to a stage of prominence, has the survival instinct as his strength. Empathy is one other strength that he possesses and perseverance is another strength of the orphan archetype. That's notwithstanding, they also have weaknesses and their weaknesses include lack of confidence, willingness to please others. So with the orphans, they mostly would wish to please others and they lack confidence in whatever they do. Even though they have survival instinct, but they sometimes lack confidence. They desire to thrive and connect with others. In as much as they have that willingness to please others, this becomes their desire to connect with others. That is why we find their willingness to please others as their weakness. Examples of this kind of archetype can be found in Harry Potter, Oliver Twist, and the Hunchback of Notre Dame. So that is what we term the orphan. The next type of character under the ego type is what we term the hero or the warrior. The hero type of character is the main man with plan. So we mostly have characters that scheme in a plot or a story. So the hero becomes the man with a plan. He is mostly armed with a particular set of skills and the sheer force of their will, the hero will conquer the enemy and carry the day. So the hero has been given some kind of skills or power or authority to overcome their enemies. That is why we call him a hero or a warrior. So they are armed with skills, and because they have certain kinds of schemes and plans, they are always able to overcome their enemies or they defeat them and come out as victorious. This incredibly competent character will usually suffer a crisis of confidence at their lowest end. So, though he is a hero, or he has been created as a hero or a warrior, he suffers some kind of confidence, crisis of confidence, and he goes through this at their lowest end, which they must overcome if they are to rise once more. So, in order to rise, Again, the hero is supposed to overcome the crisis of confidence. The hero has many strengths, and these strengths include courage, strength, and ability. And that's notwithstanding the strengths of the hero, he also possesses some kind of weaknesses. And among the weaknesses that he possesses are overconfidence and ego. So he's so overconfidence, overconfident in himself and his ability to 
even defeat whatever he comes across. And this sometimes becomes his weakness. The hero also has a desire to save the day and prove his worth. And this, this is what we derive his weakness over confidence for. Because he has the desire to prove to any other character in the test that they are worthy of the place or the position that they have been given, he mostly overdo certain things and that becomes his weakness. We won't find examples of these heroic characters or warriors in the lives of Hercules, Odyssey, and even the main character in the Lord of the Rings. Then again, the last type of character under the ego type is the caregiver. The caregiver. The caregiver type of character, which we said is under the ego, is one that is selfless. So selflessness is the defining attribute of this character type. Selflessness is the defining attribute of this character type. They might be a mother, a father, a wife, a husband, or a best friend. Whoever they are, they will do anything to protect their child, world, lover, or best friend. So someone that is classified as a caregiver is someone that possesses selflessness. And in the storyline, they can play the role of a father, a mother, a wife, a husband, or a best friend. And they look out for the better life or welfare of their lovers, their children, their wards, or even their best friends. It is quite rare for the caregiver to take center stage, but such is the nature of one so selfless. So we mostly do not find the caregiver type of characters at the center stage of our stories, because for them, they do not want to show to people that they care for their um, friends or words or lovers. So we mostly do not find them at the center stage, and that is what selfless characters mostly are. They have strengths, and their strength is their generosity and selflessness. That notwithstanding, the caregiver characters having the ability or the strength of selflessness and generosity also have weaknesses. And, and their weaknesses can also be their selflessness. Their selflessness can open up different avenues of exploitation. People, because they think that the caregiver is selfless and generous enough can manipulate that selflessness or generosity and exploit them. And that means that their selflessness can be their weakness or is their weakness. The caregiver character desires to protect and help others. So the caregiver character has the desire to protect and help others. That is why he exhibits that kind of generosity and selflessness. And we find examples of these in stories like we need to talk about Kevin. And the character Eva in the story is someone that we can classify as a caregiver. The next type of character that we look at is what we term the explorer or the seductress. And this type of character falls under 
the soul type of archetype. So we have the explorer. The explorer or the seductress. With this type of character, they have this refrain which they mostly move with. And this refrain is, I'll give you whatever you want. And any time that we meet characters that mostly talk about giving you whatever you want, you should know that this type of character is an explorer or a seductress character. It basically tells us that they come in all shapes, sizes, and genders. So we will not specifically get to know that this character is because it is a female, we can call it a seductress. Because it's a um, slim or plum, but this type of character would have different kinds, and the kinds of this type of character might be within their shape, their size, or even their gender. They might offer power, love, money, or influence. But remember, these things always come with strings attached. So the explorer or the seductress kind of character will never give you something for free. And whatever he or she offers would have strings attached to them. So as you take what he gets or she gets, he pulls out the strings and gets you hooked by his schemes or her schemes. If the seductress is involved, the moral of the tale is almost always don't believe anything that is good to be true. So any time that you meet a plot or a story that has an explorer character or that has a seductress character, the moral of the story is that do not always believe anything that is good to be true because in as much as they say that they will give you whatever you want remember that the influence the power the money that they are offering would have strings attached to them so the strength of this kind of character involves their charisma and lack of morals lack of morals so the seductress or the explorer character would have some kind of charisma charm that they mostly use to overcome their prey or victims and they also lack morals their weaknesses would involve the emptiness of their promises the emptiness of their promises so they gave us promises like they will give us whatever we want but you realize that whatever they promise to give is empty so that becomes their scheme and it is their weakness in the storyline or in that type of character the seductress or the explorer has a desire to control so their desire or their main desire in the storyline and their main desire as characters are to control their victims or other characters that they find themselves in the story. Examples of these seductress or explorer characters are what we find in the story of Samson and Delilah. And Delilah can be classified as an explorer or seductress. So that is what we term explorer or seductress. The next type of character that we look at is the rebel. The rebel type of character is one that is mad as hell and they are not going to take it 
anymore. So something has caused this kind of madness in the character to the extent that he cannot hold or tolerate this thing that caused the madness. So the rebel character is a kind of character that has grown from one state to the other and is this growth has led to some kind of madness within him and so violent within that he would not tolerate any other thing that the other characters or any other thing that is going on in the storyline. In the face of an unjust society, they are the ones with the will to overthrow. So anytime we meet situations where the society is kind of being unjust towards a group of people or other characters, this rebel character has that desire or will to overthrow the status quo. So the rebel characters are the characters that have the will to overthrow the status quo when the society is an unjust society. A rebel might be a charismatic leader. So a rebel can be a charismatic leader, but they also might work in secret. So they do not plan or they do not scheme in the open because of their charisma and their intention to overthrow a particular status quo, they mostly work in secret. They can be a freedom fighter or a rock musician and mostly when we read stories of revolutions, we come across these kinds of characters and they are mostly freedom fighters. The rebel character has strength, and among the strengths that the rebel character possesses is resourcefulness and perseverance. So the rebel has the strengths, resourcefulness, and perseverance. His weaknesses are he has small power, so he's small in power status and resource because he has the intention and will to overthrow there is a particular standard or power which he needs to overthrow and he is not within that particular realm of power so his weakness becomes being small in power and status the rebel character has a desire to change the world around them. So, as we said, he has the will to overthrow a status quo if the society is unjust. And we find such characters in Hester in the story The Scarlet Letter. So, that is what we term the rebel character. The next character that we look at is the lover. The lover kind of character is like a meat loaf. It's like a meat loaf. And this archetype will do anything for love. This archetype will do anything for love. That is why we call it the lover archetype. And they might be a prince a pop star or any other. Whoever they are, they have love in their lives and it makes them more driven and devoted than you can imagine. So the lover archetype has love within them and this is the driven force that pulls them to love any other character that they find in the story or any other character that becomes their target. And their love is so 
great that you cannot even imagine it happening in the real and this is what we term the lava character the lava character has a downside the downside of this passion or love is that they often are willing to sacrifice everything for the ones they love so the moment they fall in love with any other character they are willing to go the extra mile to sacrifice their lives if it comes to that for the character that they love and it is always one that ends up tragically a one-way ticket to tragedy so with the lover character because of the love that he possesses he is so willing to sacrifice even if it is his life for the love that he has found or met in the story the lover character has some kinds of strength and it includes devotion and love love is his strength and devotion commitment is also his strength but his weaknesses include the willingness to sacrifice identity life and liberty so with the lava character or archetype he is willing to sacrifice everything his identity his liberty his riches even his life and this becomes his weakness but he desires to be in relationship he desires to be in relationship probably marriage and the type of characters or archetypes this type of archetype or lover can be found in Romeo and Juliet that is Shakespeare's story Romeo and Juliet the next type of character or archetype which we will look at is the creator so the creator becomes the last archetype under the soul category and with creator for this kind of character nothing is more important than the need to make something that is why it is called creator so nothing is more important than the need to create the need to create in many stories a creator will be the artist of some sort so many of the stories that would have the creator you would have the character being in the form of an artist because he, he has the desire to create and the artist is willing to sacrifice their own well-being and relationships in the pursuit of the greater abstract goal so this archetype the creator archetype is willing to sacrifice his well-being and relationship in search in the pursuit to achieve this greater abstract goal of creation because of their single-minded vision creators often pay the greatest personal price and this brings us to their weakness which is their personal sacrifice their perfectionism and their egoism so the creator has some kind of perfectionist character or the ability to sacrifice his personhood and this becomes his weakness his strength is his creativity and the ability to execute their vision so whenever they think of creating and they are able to achieve it becomes their strength so the creator kind of character is one that has that creative ability and 
this ability enables him to execute his vision. His desire is to create something of value to cement their legacy. So the creator kind of character has the desire to create something of value to cement their legacy. So when they are exiting from this world, they would want people to know what they have done and their creation will be a form of cementing their legacy. We find such characters in stories like Hamilton and the main character in the story Hamilton is what we, um, is the character Alexander Hamilton. So that is what we have under the soul archetype. The soul archetype. And the soul archetype, we said that we have the explorer, the rebel, the lover, and the creator. So we will look at the last aspect of the archetype, which is self. And under the self archetype, we have the jester. The jester. We have the jester. The jester kind of archetype can also be known as the fool or the clown or the hedonist. And this type of archetype has different or many faces. Many faces means that they can play different roles at different times. And they are probably the joker in the pack. In myth, jokers often act as the cautionary tale and warning people not to waste too much time in pursuit of pleasure. So they are placed in a story to warn others from pursuing things of pleasure and they serve as a warning for other characters who think that everything of this world is, should be pleasurable. So that is in mythologies, that is the role of the jester. But in modern culture, they are often used as comic reliefs. They are often used as comic reliefs. So you find a fool or a jester or a clown in a story and he's used as a comic relief. A comic relief simply means that he comes in with a comic scene to relieve characters or audience from the tension that is being built in the story. His strength is his joyous nature and his likability. So he likes almost every character or he likes everything that is around him and he feels happy and joyous and that serves as his strength. And his weakness is his frivolousness. And this becomes the weakness of the jester. Desires of the jester is to live for today and be happy always. So for the jester, what he thinks of is that whatever situation he is in, he should be happy. So that is what he desires, to live for today and be happy. We find jesters in a lot of stories, and one story that we have jester or a fool or a clown in is The Lion King, and in Shakespeare's comedies, we mostly meet um, jesters in them. The next kind of character that we look at is what we term the sage. With the sage archetype, the protagonist might encounter some sort of mental character. So the mental character or the sage meets the protagonist and he becomes someone that prepares the protagonist for the trials ahead. So this kind of archetype serves as a mentor to the protagonist. And they can be of different forms. 
sometimes this mentor will be a parent at other times the mentor might be a wizard or a suburban karate teacher so someone who trains another person to overcome the trials or someone who cautions or prepares another person to face the trials of life whatever form they take they are the one that guide our hero through the unknown so whenever you meet an archetype that is guiding the protagonist or the hero through the unknown then that archetype will be classified as a mental archetype or a sage and this archetype has the strength of wisdom and experience so the sage character is wise and is rich with experience but his weakness is the inability to act his weakness is the inability to act and that becomes something that the sage or the mental character battles with the sage or the mental the mental character has a desire to help the hero to push past their boundaries and make sense of the world so that is what they desire to achieve and as i said the desire to help the hero push past their boundaries and make sense of the world so as we explained earlier he is the one that prepares the hero to face the trials ahead of him and we find this kind of archetype in stories like great expectations in the character of margaret margaret so margaret serves as a mentor or a sage in great expectations the next archetype that we are looking at is the magician the magician the magician archetype is the aspiring masters of the universe the aspiring masters of the universe they are driven by their inquisitive nature and that is why we call them magicians they are driven by their inquisitive nature and they aspire to be masters of the universe the magician seeks enlightenment the magician seeks enlightenment but unlike the sage or the mentor the magician also want to impose their will on the world around them so the mentor rather helps the hero but the magician would want to impose their will because they wish to become the masters of the universe they always would want to impose their will on the world or the people around them the magician can easily impress others even if they are not natural wizards their abilities are beyond the comprehension of mere mortals so the ability of the magician is beyond the thinking ability of mortals in that they are always impressing their will on others and have the desire to be the masters of this world or universe their strength is the knowledge and power that they possess so with the magician he possesses knowledge and power and that is why they always suppress people or they would want to impose their will on other characters or the world around them and they have hubris as their weakness pride pride as their weakness their desire is to create order from a chaotic situation and bend the world 
towards their way and we find such characters in the great Gatsby and Gatsby becomes such archetype the magician archetype in the story the great Gatsby so that is what we have under the self character the last character under self aside jester sage and magician is the ruler and with the ruler kind of archetype it is the kind that every society needs as a leader the ruler is a kind that every society needs as a as a leader but there are various questions that you would ask will this leader cope with absolute power will this leader maintain control and order will this leader rule with kindness and compassion or with iron fist so these are some questions that we mostly ask ourselves when we meet the archetype ruler in our stories the archetype ruler has strengths and among the strengths of this archetype is his leadership qualities his charisma and power aside that his weakness becomes the inability to delegate and suspicion because he suspects or is always suspicious of other characters he finds it difficult to delegate power to others and he has a desire to control and hold on to power and we have characters like Miranda Priestly in the story The Devil Wears Prada and Miranda Priestly is a ruler in that particular story so today our lesson has been on archetype and we say that the archetype is something that occurs in different cultures again and again it can be an idea a character a situation or even a pattern and we have three types of archetypes and they are the character archetype the situational archetype and the symbolic archetype but our concentration was on the character archetype and we realize that under character archetype we have three different groups we have the soul the ego and the self we looked at the various types under each of these groups under the ego type we were given the sub categorizations which are the innocent the orphan the hero and the caregiver the soul has the explorer the model the lover and the creator and the self has the jester the sage magician and the ruler thank you very much for spending your time with us and i'll continuously encourage you to subscribe and share with others and don't forget to comment on this lesson so that we will build our knowledge and ideas together thank you